Well, we have arrived at a topic that is a pretty big deal for the multivariable calculus course. It turns out that much of what we've been studying, uh, vector functions, functions of multiple variables, partial derivatives, multiple integrals or iterated integrals, has been leading us to these next few sections. So the first topic we're going to look at is introduction to what's called a line integral. Now, the word line in mathematics usually refers to something that we would think of uh, has this appearance to it. But if you were in an art class, they might actually call this a line as well. It doesn't have two dimensions. It's not shaded. Um, it's not the, a shape. It's just a path. Um, if I were to be allowed to rename it, I would probably want to call this a curve integral. But the fact is, it's called a line integral in every book, in English at least. So we're going to call it a line integral. The problem we're going to look at is to how to calculate what is the mass of a wire. And you can think of these two paths as wires. To find the mass, I would need um, the density multiplied by the length. So the density might be, for example, grams per centimeter, and the length might be measured in centimeters, and so we would have this equal to grams when we multiply it out. That would be mass. Okay? Now, Density will be usually given, and it could be rho of xy, or it could be um, rho of xyz. It could even be a single variable, but that's not as interesting a case. So if we look at the double or triple variable problem, um, that's our density function. Now. What we need is then a way to look at the length, the length itself. Well, we have our curve, and we've been using this notation r of t to measure the curve itself. Now, the length of the curve using the symbol s has multiple notations one involved uh, the square root from a to b of x prime squared plus y prime squared that's where r prime is equal to the first component and the derivative of the second component. But we also learned later that this r prime was called the velocity vector. And that made this expression here nothing more than the magnitude of the velocity vector. Depending on the book and the teacher, you might have used the first as your primary formula, or you might have used the second as your primary formula. Now, what I wanted to do is to figure out how much a small section of length is on the curve. Now, so how, how far is it from here to here along this curve? You know, how far is that? So, if I were to take the derivative of that we would get the derivative of the magnitude of the velocity vector and the way this works in calc 1 let me make a little divider here 
using our fundamental theorem of calculus is we would say from some constant to t and then we would switch out the variable t here for another variable. This is if you want to use proper notation throughout. But the concept is basically, if you want to integrate this function, and then you want to take the derivative again, then ds dt is going to be the magnitude of the velocity vector. What that gives us is that ds is equal to magnitude of velocity vector dt. This would be called the differential form, which we have used also in this course in previous experiences. Takes me back to the question, how do we find the mass of the wire? How do we do it? How do we find the mass of the wire? Well, mass is approximately equal to the sum of all of these densities multiplied by delta s values. If we let the limit n goes to infinity of this sum, then that gives us the following, mass equals integral density function ds. They use a c here with this s to refer to, we're talking about these curves. Well, ds can be replaced by this. density function, magnitude of velocity, dt. This is something, if we were given the curve, r of t, and we're given the density function, rho, this is what our first line integral looks like. If you stick around, I'll do a couple of examples on our next uh, segment. I wanted to use this for the derivation of something pretty big moving into the future. There you have it.